Now, is Tank Davis a pay-per-view star or is he a guy that fights on pay-per-view? A lot of people are saying that Tank Davis isn't a pay-per-view star and they want to give all of the credit to Ryan Garcia for them breaking one of the all-time records, for them being ranked six all-time in pay-per-view buys of all time. Ryan and Tank put on 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. That's an all-time record. But there are people that are saying Tank Davis isn't a star. He's just a guy that fights on pay-per-view. I would have to disagree. When you compare the opponents and the exposure, Tank Davis is as big a star as Canelo, if not bigger. KJ going live at 11 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, because I ain't going to be going live tonight. <laughs> that's, hey, that's a good, good catch. But I got company, so I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to beat the company before they come. But listen, let's get into the facts. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Tank Davis and Hector Garcia sold 200K buys. Do you know why that's great? Because nobody knew who the hell Hector Garcia was. No one knew who Hector Garcia was. And Tank was able to sell 200, uh, 200K buys. Canelo fought John Ryder. Now we're talking about a global audience. We all know that UK fans love boxing. They only did 400,000 buys. And Canelo has been the face of boxing for over 10 years. Do you know that when Canelo fought Jamel Charlo, they did 700,000 buys? Jake Paul and Tommy Fury outsold Canelo and Jamal Charlo. Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia broke records. Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia, they put on a pay-per-view event that was bigger than any pay-per-view event that Canelo has been involved in for his entire life. People don't know that. <clears throat> People don't know that. So when y'all say Tank Davis isn't a, a pay-per-view star, he's just a guy that fights on pay-per-view, y'all not looking at the facts. Tank Davis is an unadulterated, bona fide pay-per-view star. And he may, yeah, he may as well be the face of boxing. Someone says Ryan is a star. Ryan is a star. That's facts. But it takes two to tango. Canelo hasn't done shit since all time records. Yeah. Can you hear Somebody me? Said, well, who gets paid more? Canelo's supposed to be getting paid more. He's been the face of boxing pretty much since Floyd retired. He's supposed to be getting paid more. What's good, Wickedy? What's good, my dude? Um, somebody said, what is it, the Tank Davis riding stream? No. This is me. Yesterday it was addressed in my live uh, about whether or not Tank was a pay-per-view star. So I went and did some research. And you have to admit, first off, Tank Davis is already above Canelo on the all-time pay-per-view list when he fought Ryan Garcia. Second, when he fought Hector Garcia, he was able to pull in 200,000 buys. Keep in mind, nobody knows who the hell Hector Garcia is. Canelo fighting John Ryder after being the face of boxing for a decade they only sold 400,000 buys, and John Ryder is coming from the UK audience. Canelo has the Mexican audience. So you're talking about a global event. Only did 400,000 buys. So Tank pretty much pushed this pay-per-view by his damn self. And when you look at the fact that Canelo, <clears throat> when he fought Triple G for the third time, they only did six, 600,000 buys. That was less than Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. That was less than Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia. When he fought Jamel Charlo, they did 700,000 buys. <clears throat> that was less than Tommy Fury and Jake Paul. That was less than Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. But Canelo has been the face of boxing for over 10 years. How is it that he's not outselling Jake Paul? How is it that he's not outselling Tank Davis in the biggest fights? You know why? Because the biggest fight that people want to see, the fight that could put Canelo back on the top 10 all-time list, for the for a pay-per-view, that'd be his second time since fighting Mayweather. It's him versus Benavidez, and he doesn't want to fight Benavidez. So when you put when you want to put on a big event in boxing, there has to be drama. There has to be a chance that you're gonna get your ass whooped. Just like when Ali fought Frazier, when Ali fought Foreman, there has to be um some sort of uh I can't think of the word, uh, but some sort of unknown, a sense of the unknown. Parody, that's the word I'm looking for. There has to be some sort of parody. See, Canelo don't want the parody. Canelo just want to fight people that everyone knows he's going to beat. He doesn't want the... 
Seth. I'm, I'm gonna re I'm gonna rejoin right now. Okay, it's just I'm gonna get my other headphones. Okay. Okay, that's cool, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, Appreciate I'm, you. I'm, I'm gonna rejoin. I'm gonna rejoin. Bring your ass back up here, Wiggity. Yo, Polar, man. What you think? Is Tank Davis a pay per view star? Of course, man. Of course he is. I mean, that's what you're talking about. Can, can you even deny after his like last three fights? You know, exactly. Every, everybody's exactly. Now, in, no matter what, and it's not even just for the opposition. It's for Javante right? himself. Yep. I had to make this live because yesterday in my live, people mentioned this. If y'all in the chat, make sure y'all liking the live. TikTok, they don't push my live. They don't push my content. So my all of my supporters, y'all have to be tapping the screen. And I appreciate you like I feel like if people weren't being biased, everybody would admit he's a pay-per-view star. There's he's like no star. denying it. There's no denying it. No deny. He Right now, to me, he's like the modern day Tyson because it don't matter who Tank is fighting. People going to buy that shit. He will no matter because there's KOs. It's not like yep. a boring Thank ass twelve round decision. It's you know, an Canelo's action. last action. what three Fight. fights all went to decision. And you know, <clears> if, <throat> if it continues to go that way, that man's not going to be selling pay per views for too long. Right? Who are you talking about? Canelo. Oh yeah, well Canelo, Canelo on his way out, but Canelo will always sell pay per views because he's proved himself in the sport. Like people think that I'm a Canelo hater. No, Canelo's resume and the way that Canelo performs. Um, he he has proved that he's worth buying. The reason why he's not out selling Tank and, and, and Jake Paul is because the big fight that people want to see, the fight that could put him back on the top 10 all-time pay-per-view list is him versus Benavidez. And he doesn't want to fight Benavidez. So now he's trying to convince you, people you, that you can't just pin it on Canelo himself, though. Him versus Jamel Charlo is a fight that we should be interested in. He's trying I to can... convince us that him versus Jaime Munguia yeah. or whoever. But, yeah. Huh? yeah, you can, but here's my point though. You right. guys also got to pin it on the people who, like the the governing bodies, like the uh, belts themselves. Like, why aren't they putting David Benavidez or stripping Canelo for not because, fighting? Because, let me explain. I understand where you're coming from, but you have to understand, Canelo is a cash cow. Canelo is a cash cow. Even though he not he's not the top, top seller no more, he can consistently bring in 700000 800000 600000 That's good money. You could take that to the bank. So you're not going to put too much pressure on Canelo and, and he forfeits the belt. And now you're not getting the tax. Every time uh, you hold you hold a belt for a sanction the body, every fight that you have, they get to tax you a certain percentage. So mm -hmm. Canelo bringing in these big windfalls of cash for them, they're going to allow him to, to move how he want to move. You feel me? Yeah, right, so, I guess, so I guess they've seen that, uh, what's his name, uh, Terrence Bud couldn't sell, so they stripped his ass. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, time, it's time for Skip Bayless to come in here, bro. Take, take, take is not a pay per view star, bro. He's not a pay per view star. He's not a pay per view star, bro. Okay, okay, because... okay. Now state your business then. All Give right, here's business. here's my business. He's not a household name, bro. You act I like mean, everybody. You, you, you no. yeah. You're you're sitting here. You're comparing him to Mike Tyson. Everybody knew who Mike Tyson was, bro. Right now, do you not you're even know who here... Davis is? I, I know who take I'm I'm a boxing fan. I know who well, take I'm gonna tell you a personal experience of mine. I was going to school in Pennsylvania, right? I was it was a um my, basically mostly white people. I'd never been around so many white people in my life. And, and, and some of them were cool, I ain't gonna lie. Uh but listen, the point is this them white boys didn't know shit about boxing. They ain't know shit about boxing, but they knew who Tank Davis was. And we was in the sticks, we was in the troll PA. They knew who Tank Davis was. Why? Why do they know who Tank Davis is? Because he knocks people out. He's on Instagram no. with, with the, the knockout clips. No, they know who he is because of Ryan Garcia. You're sitting here talking about Ryan Garcia versus Ryan Tank yet. Davis. I, bro, You're... I haven't been in college in years. He hadn't fought Ryan yet. Okay, okay. That, no, I'm but serious. hold on, hold on, hold on. When you're talking about that Ryan Garcia take is one of the the, the best pay per view. Uh, that's because Ryan Garcia was the A. They, they people didn't didn't buy you that. Know, wait, 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 let me let me give you a question. Let me. I mean, not, not a question. Let me let me let me tell you something. Before Tank fought Ryan, he had already done 200,000 pay-per-view buys. Ryan had not been featured on no big pay-per-view before fighting Tank. So what you're saying makes no sense. Who's Tank more popular, Ryan Garcia or Tank Davis? Who's more popular, Ryan? I mean, Ryan? Wait, 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 hold on. But you do realize before they ever fought, like years before, all Ryan did was bring up Tank Davis. Like Exactly. It, and Tank would barely like mention him. Would, mention, would barely mention him. You know why? Because Ryan knew. Damn, that man is a star. I'm trying to build myself into a star, and I got a chance to make a lot of money. So the way that Ryan was calling him out years ago, Ryan Ryan Garcia peeped game. He peeped. Damn, that motherfucker. He was got cloud chasing, is what he was, yeah, he was cloud chasing, and it worked. 
So your hey, point man. is invalid, man. Hey, hey, but food, no, he's not at all. Ryan Garcia more is more popular food. than Cena. No, he food. wasn't cloud chasing. He was trying to get an opponent, bro. Right? Say what you will about Ryan Garcia, but he's, he does balls. the best yeah. that he can. He does Ryan the best that he can. He 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 tries to, to fight the best fighters. Say, say what yeah, you will about Ryan Garcia. Right 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 man, you can't take it from. Him. But let me tell you something, Foodie. Let's get into the business of this. All right, let's get into the business of this. Tank Davis sold 200k buys with a virtual nobody. Nobody knew who Hector Garcia was. Do you know that Canelo, when he fought John Ryder, uh, John Ryder is a UK fighter. The UK fans are some of the biggest boxing fans in the world. They were only able to pull in 400,000. So that shows you. And Canelo has been a face of boxing for the last decade. Didn't that they give that, tickets that, away that for that fight? Tank is closer than Canelo than, than what you think. And Tank's fight against Ryan Garcia. I mean, that is a big deal. also my Canelo's fight with Jamel Charlo, Triple G. It also all of his fights. It even also his fight with Floyd Mayweather. That shows you that Tank Davis is on Canelo's ass, man, like a bad rash. He's on Canelo's ass like like Charmin. I just I don't agree with Tank the personification of him being like the, the face of boxing. I don't think he's the face of boxing. I think Canelo is still Look, the face right of now, boxing. Right now, right now, Canelo is still the face of boxing, but <clears throat> Tank Davis is on his ass. Is what I'm saying. Like he's on pause, but he's on his ass like like the booty warrior, bro. Chill. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> no, nah, bro. So that with a straight face, I was about to say. <laughs> No, nah, I'm trying to pull it off with a straight face. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Oh, man. He owe that bad ass, boy. Oh, my man. Oh, man. My man Kevin trying to come up. Kevin going to tell y'all, Tank Davis is a pay-per-view star, man. Either hey, way, I, I, I like Tank Davis, bro. He's a, he's a great boxer. I, I don't give you a fuck like about him, But, but you don't want to admit the facts. Tank is a pay-per-view star. Hey, hey, what's up, Kevin? Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? Man, listen, man. Yesterday you wasn't in here, but people were trying to say that Tank wasn't a pay per view star. When you look at the numbers, this man is 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 approaching Canelo when it comes to star status, man. And they they're not looking at the numbers. They're not looking at the fact that him and Ryan Garcia made history. Their pay per view is above the Floyd Mayweather Canelo pay per view. Canelo Canelo hasn't been in the top ten pay per view since he fought Floyd. Yeah, that's on that's on that's fact. Uh, yeah, that that, and, and, that 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 paid one way more than Floyd's uh, uh event. And you know what's crazy? Yeah. When he fought Hector Garcia, he did two hundred thousand buys. That may not look like a lot to people, but look at look at Devin Haney and Lomachenko. Those are men who's who's for years they have been in the relative spotlight. Loma has an entire country behind him. Tank fought Hector Garcia and did more buys than Loma and, and Devin, and it wasn't even uh for no belt. It wasn't for it wasn't. Yeah, none of this. None of this was for no belt. He, Tank ain't hardly have many belt, belts and walking around with belts think about and that. for belts. Think about, and, that means that mean his name is selling. His yeah, that's what I'm. Selling. That's right. That's what proves that you don't need a belt. It's your name that makes honor amongst men. Well, his no, name is honorable in boxing. He's the face of boxing. I'm just going to been that way because Ali said that years ago. Like, I, I, I don't, a belt don't make me. Ali said. That, you know, he do, you remember, do you remember Ali threw the do you remember Ali in history threw the Olympic medal over the bridge? He threw it in the river. That's yeah. historical. It don't make you, it's your name. Javante exactly. Davis has made a name for herself. Canelo Alvarez made a name for herself. But right now, in our era, Tank Davis is the face of boxing on Tank that level, on making Canelo. that kind of I'm move. still listen, I was still give it to Canelo because Canelo have done it more consistent. But Tank yeah. on his ass, man. Like literally, Canelo on his way out, and Tank is on his way up. Yeah, exactly. You gotta give it to Kepa. Yes, sir. Comments real fast, Kepa. Somebody says there's no pay per view in Loma's country. Um, <sighs> Loma Chinko's fans were in America. They follow. They go. They go to. They will go to a country and, and buy a pay per view, or they'll they'll go online and, and buy a pay per view. For you to say there's no pay per view in his country, that's bullshit. I'm not buying it. Loma's fans will support him wherever he go. I think a good comparison uh, for fights like uh, Hector Garcia versus Javante Davis. Yeah, I know. Is uh, Dimitri Bivol versus they said it's, they Canelo. Said it's free. They said it's free in his country, but at the end of the day, Loma came to America. So if he was really that big, people in America would have bought would have bought more uh, would have bought more pay per view. Because if Tank go down there and fight in Ukraine, I promise you, there are going to be people all across the world who goes to watch it because they're coming to watch the knockout. I have a question for Keppa. Yeah, they said Mexico pay per view is free too, but oh. Canelo has done oh. six hundred thousand oh. and seven hundred thousand oh. buys. So 
What you're saying is, is irrelevant. If you're a star, you're a star. It don't matter if your country don't have pay per view over they over they do. When you're a star, people all across the world are gonna be trying to come find you. That means people in different countries are gonna buy your shit. Hey, go ahead, go ahead and ask Kef for the question, man. Oh, I was gonna ask. Do you think Kepa? Do you think Ryan Gar Fuck no. Hey, Kef, are you still with us, brother? Oh, there you go. There you go. I'm mute. When we talk about Ryan Garcia, wait, wait, will you ask me a question? Because we talk about Ryan <laughs> Garcia. We talk about him. We're looking at a, a media pay per view, media star, we call him. Internet, okay? We have to be realistic and go down the journey road of boxing. Who has he fought? Who was backing him? And what was going on at that time? All right, no more virus. We out, everybody's outside. We're back in the arenas. We were actually seeing Ryan do what Ryan do. All right. Like it or not, we want to call it stage fights, A-class fighters, C-class fighters, because he is an A-class fighter. We could call it what we want to call it. Everybody signs contracts. Everybody gets paid. But that man, right. and I went to two of his shows live. He packed, Ryan packed out that dog on room, man. He packed out that dog on room like it was Oscar De La Hoya. Boy, a golden boy up in there. No, hey, he packed that's it a out. great compare. That's I always say this. I say Ryan is a modern day Oscar De La Hoya because oh, yes, he can, oh, don't he can sell a fight. Like don't you, wait, wait, I gotta finish. I gotta finish. Oh, no, I gotta finish. No, no. Go, ahead, Hold on. go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your statement, my brother. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. I'm almost done. Then we have to look at Javante Davis, how his pathway came down. Got called. He got called to come down to Vegas to spar. Always remember that he was minding his own business. Trying to go down the pro road the best way he knew how. Coming out of the ghetto, he was called down there. So his pathway took a wide turn. Hmm. But as he became in his pathway, he didn't fight nobody great. He didn't like, you know, he's making his name. But, ho, oh, look what look what happened. Floyd took him around town. It was time to step his game up. He was packing out arenas going around the tour to show the world, I can mm -hmm. pack these rooms out without internet. Without in without a title, see, mm. so so you have a gravity that's a nucleus for both of those. So if you ask me that question, I would fair them up in the room together and say, you know what, those are the money boy cash cows right there, because one can pull one up and make money, and the other can pull one in the room to make money. They both going to make money without each other. Is what I'm saying. Exactly. Without each other, so we yep. can't put that factor on it. It wouldn't be fair. I put them an even fair in the room. They two CEOs in the room. They just yeah. trying to merge their companies yeah. when they box. They merge oh, when they in that That's ring. a great way to put it, and uh, I couldn't have put it no better. Because at the end of the day, whether you like Ryan or not, whether you want to look at skills, that motherfucker's a star, and Tank he he's he's a star as well. So they both two stars. But one thing that you touched on, and I've been saying it for a while, um, uh, Ryan Garcia to me is a modern day Oscar De La Hoya. He could sell a fight. All the women think he pretty. And <laughs> I think that Ryan, just like Oscar, he gonna, Ryan gonna win some of them big fights, but he gonna end up losing most of the big fights. But I gotta give a shout out to him because guess what? He's making him, he's making fights that we wanna see. The fact that he fighting Devin Haney after coming off that tank loss, he only had one little tune up fight. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Most people after after the tank fight, they would be like, nah, I need more time. Ryan jumping right back into the fire. So only thing I could do is tip my head off. I don't wear a hat, so. You know, I just I just give him a nod. <laughs> oh, yeah. JJ, you want to talk about pay per view fights? You know, you know what the second best selling fight last year was? What? Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. No, 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 Fury. I said he wasn't in here when I said that, but I said there's no way that Jake Paul and Tank Davis should be outselling Canelo at this point in his career. The only reason why they're outselling him is because the fight that everybody wants to see, the fight that would be pay per view history, that would probably uh could, could potentially be bigger than, than Tank and Ryan. Who knows? But it could. It would be the biggest pay per view fight he's had in years. It's him versus David Benavidez. He doesn't want to give people that fight. But that's the fight where the entire world will stop doing what they're doing and say, "Hold the fuck up, Canelo might yeah. lose. This is parody. Yeah. Canelo yeah. might and lose. Then, and then number the three, outcome of this fight. Let's go buy this. Number three most pay per views last year. KSI versus uh, Temper Phase. You know what I mean? Like some nobody. Two nobodies, really. You know what I mean? I like that's like the, I don't. I don't think that's true. 
What K? Oh, you think KSI is a crazy. good boxer? No, I no, it, it, yeah, no. Look it up, bro. It was uh, hold on. The number for KS. No, I don't think. I think they were lying, and I'm pretty sure the pay per view was like ten dollars for a pay per view. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's true. That's that's a good point. But still, three hundred thousand is nothing to scoff at. I mean, you know, yeah, three hundred thousand is, is 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 really really good. But at the end of the day, uh, it's boxer. There's nothing that KSI does that a boxer can't do. Like this motherfucker do YouTube, he games, he does all that. So if you a boxer, you finish training, you got to go do whatever it takes to, to sell the fight. Ali used to do it. Ali would train and then go talk to the media. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to get in where you fit in. So if KSI is out selling professional boxers, more power to him. And professional boxers should take that and um, use whatever some some of what he's doing so they can make more money. It's not it's not really you know a bad thing. It's actually good. I mean, hell, Ryan Garcia did it with Jake Paul, fucking all these. Yeah, but Ryan, things. we can't really look at Ryan uh, and, and compare him to KSI. Ryan, a real boxer, like Ryan went through the, you know extensive amateur program, multiple national time champion, um, and he's making these big pay per view headlines against the world's best. Oh, no, I was saying in the way in the that world. he promotes KSI so. fought somebody. KSI fought somebody that nobody knows and who don't really have no boxing skill like that. Ryan fought one of the greatest fighters in the world today, and now he's about to fight another one of the greatest fighters in the world today, in Devin Haney. So it's like it's at, it, you can't really compare it, but you I understand check, what you're saying. And these guys is doing this without a belt. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan is doing this without a belt. <laughs> pay per view buys. So we agree, pay per view buys do not equate to skill. Is that a fair statement? I mean, that was always. Uh, no, we, that has always been like that, though. That's not nothing new. At the end of the day, it's it's about charisma. It's about personality. Sometimes the, the the guy who has the most charisma is the best boxer. Like we've seen that with Floyd. We saw that with Ali in the 60s where he was the best in the world and he popped the best shit. Most of the time, the guy with the most charisma isn't the best boxer. Like I'll give you an example. Floyd, he fought um, Arturo Gotti. Arturo Gotti at that time was a bigger star than Floyd. The skills were nowhere near close. But people like Arturo, Ricardo Mayorga. Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton too. Ricky, Ricky Hatton was really popular. Yeah. But his skill level wasn't really the, the highest. He could fight, though. He could fight his ass off, but he didn't have the highest skill level. But he had a hell of a personality. This man is smoking cigarettes and stuff. The people was interested in it. You're talking about Mayorga? Yeah, Ray Mayorga was a, was a, was a star. But what, he wasn't super what did skilled. You... But mo most of the time, the biggest star is the most super skilled. But sometimes, yeah, somehow he once beat... in a while, you get somebody like Floyd or Ali in the 60s. Uh, even Canelo, at one point, Canelo was the best in the world at one point, and he was also the biggest star in the world. I don't think that's true right now. I don't think he's the best in the world right now, and I don't think he's the biggest star in the world right now. I think Tank really is really right there with him. It was the funniest shit when he beat Vernon Forrest. I mean, I couldn't, oh, yeah. I don't know how the fuck he No, because because he, he, he got Vernon to fight his fight. He got Vernon to try to fight a machismo fight. Be a prime Shane Mosley and was forty and oh like I, I, just, I was because like what the Mayorga got run in the, in, into a fight instead of a boxing match. Mayorga was great at fighting and trading and all of that and wild you know wild shit like look I'm gonna I'm gonna let you hit styles everybody run and tried to do that like oh I'm gonna I'm leave myself open you hit me then you know, I hit you that wasn't what Vernon should have did. His angles were so weird, Mayorga. Like he could hit you like out of fucking nowhere. Like so weird, bro. Like Mayorga's badass, bro. I, I fucking love yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. That's why you remember him because he was badass, and that's why he was able to sell. He was like a Spanish Mike Tyson, like basically. Oh, that no, motherfucker no, was no, crazy. <laughs> no, as far as skill, no, no as far as skill, no. no. As far as psychoticness, Mayorga, man. His mentality. They're both the motherfuckers are out of there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. I understand the similarity. If you're talking about mental, they both was uh, some pretty fearless men and kind of unhinged type guys. But in the boxing ring, that can help you. Yeah, for sure. And Moyerga, I just wish he spoke English because if he did, he'd be like he was like a another version of Adrian Broner because the Broner got yeah, he talked all type of trap. But I mean, he didn't. He was like this man smacked Shane Mosley's girl on the ass as a promotion. Like nah, that's he crazy. didn't have to necessarily speak, speak English. Like they was, he knew how to get people interested in them damn fights. Cause like, who expected that? Like, Shane Mosey girl bent over to pick something up. That man put his hand on that woman's backside. Man, it was crazy. You don't have to speak English. You don't have to. It don't matter what language you speak. You understand the disrespect in that situation. You understand? So Mayorga knew how to appeal to fans without being the best um, 
a speaker of English. Like Manny Pacquiao, yeah, Manny Pacquiao, now, you don't speak good English, but he made up for it with in the ring, his in the ring antics. So you don't always have to speak good English. It's just, it's just something that we would prefer. But some fighters, it holds them back. A lot of Cuban fighters, them not speaking English, it holds them back because they're super talented. Somebody says, then Oscar came and embarrassed his man. A lot of people beat um, uh, Mayorga. It is what it is. He wasn't the most talented, but he could sell a room. Without Ryan, 250K max sales. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool that you said that, but Tank about to fight Frank Martin. And I, I know that's going to be a good pay-per-view seller because Frank Martin has the Texas audience. The Texas audience are some of the uh, uh, most loyal boxing fans in the U.S., the U.S. is not really a country for boxing anymore. It's about football and basketball. But Texas, they watch yeah. boxing. They buy them pay-per-view. That's why Errol Spence was able to become a star. Honestly, so, bro. That's why this is a great fight. Huh? Although although Ryan is making the big fights happen, if we're being real, like out of T.O. Female, um, He said T.O. Female. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that, but T.O. Female, uh, Roley, Devin, you know, Tank, Etc. I feel like the only two people Ryan can beat in the 140 division is Teofimo and Roly, and th that's pushing it with Teofimo. I really feel like Ryan loses to a lot of these people at 140. I mean, like I said, Oscar De La Hoya. When you look at his box rec, Oscar probably is gonna beat a little bit more people than Ryan, but Oscar lost most of his big fights. Like he did, he just did. He lost most of his big fights, but he was a good fight. Fighter. Like twice, right? He lost to Mosley. He lost to Hopkins. Um, the, the Pacquiao, that was at the end, but he still lost. It was a big fight. Like, Oscar But he got before. robbed by Trinidad. But he well, got robbed by Trinidad. Robbery, but he lost. And he, he robbed Pernell Whitaker, so that was karma. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Like, Someone said, damn, you got Oscar wrong. I don't have Oscar wrong. When you look at his box rec, most of his big fights against his biggest opponents, Floyd, of course, he lost to Floyd. He lost. But I already named five people in five big fights that he lost to. And, and nobody's saying Oscar didn't duck nobody. That's true. But just like Ryan Garcia, when you have that much star power, it's different. There's certain guys who want to who wanna duck people because they know, damn, if I take a loss, it's going to affect my pockets. Oscar was a guy where he could lose and still go make money. So, of course, you're going to be wanting to fight everybody. It don't make a difference. It's not going to affect your career. He has so much star power. Ryan is in the same position, I think. Like, Ryan just lost the Tank, but we all still want to see him fight Devin Haney. And he didn't lose the Tank in a good way. He, you know, he quit. But we still are interested in seeing him fight. So he has so much charisma. People want to go out there and buy the fucking fight, man. Even though it don't look like he's the top skill level-wise, he still could sell these fights. So shout out to him. Oscar De Loya was in the same position. We need more fighters like that nowadays. Yeah, I mean, people are saying we need more fighters like that, but at the end of the day, when black fighters lose, y'all try to y'all try to end their entire career. So the fans have to be a little bit less racial and, and the sport to be better. No. Tio is not that good, not gonna lie. I don't know, honestly. This is Tio great. Is very good to me. I think yeah. Tio Tio be having mental breakdowns and, and I think Tio he kind of fight, you know, he kind of fight in, in one style, like he fight going forward explosively. So what does that mean when you fight in one style? If somebody else presents a different style, you may lose, you, you may struggle. But to me, T.O. real good. He's dangerous. He's a real dangerous uh, opponent. I said another reason, though, like the black fighters, the good fights don't happen because everybody want to keep their undefeated record. Do you, you, that's what that's, we, we saying the same thing. That's it's because same. black fighters, they don't bounce back from the laws better because the public is already trying to, they want them to lose anyway. It's a racial yeah. thing. So they be wanting the black fighters to lose so they could cancel their whole career. Look at Adrian Broner. What do they say? Problem solved. Yeah, you finally shut him up. AB uh, is a failure, this and that. AB is a multiple division world champion. AB yeah. was able to make um, seven figures, if not eight figures in his life lifetime. AB was extremely dangerous. He may not have lived up to his potential, but he had a great career. So yeah. look, it says Adrian was extremely annoying though. You see what I mean? They say he nah, was but annoying, it's... but they were the ones buying his pay-per-views. Right, that, right. that, that, that was his whole thing, to be annoying so you can watch him lose. But was he really annoying though? Because when Conor McGregor does it, everybody yeah. loves him. It's just racial. And I love Broner. Yeah, yeah but racial. Broner will go. Broner, Broner will go to that extent. Like he would, like you know, talk about people's families and shit. You know what I mean? It, Conor McGregor disrespected the hell out of Khabib. Y'all, y'all, it's just racist, bro. It's okay. He did. He don't gotta admit it. Oh yeah, he it's went crazy with it. I think yeah, it's just, wait, wait, it's 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 and the Dustin Poirier fight.
Adrian did it on a mistake. I definitely think it's truth to what you're saying, KJ. But at the yeah, same time, I think that Brown. black fighters let it get to their hit their confidence. No, no yeah, but yeah. the thing is, Adrian Broner, at the end of the day, he's in entertainment. So that was yeah, the way yeah. he told us to entertain the people. Just like yeah. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor don't hold back. He say all type of stuff. He disrespect religion, wives, children, all of that. But nobody I'll tell you why. Love. I'll tell you why and Broner was annoying. Is because he was trying to act like he was the next Floyd and he wasn't beating nobody. That's the thing. That's Conor what was annoying. Trying to act like the next Floyd. Now, Brona moved up too fast. He Stole had no women with that entire blueprint. And y'all loved him for it. everything that Floyd did, McGregor did, and y'all loved him for it. At the end of the day, McGregor was white. That's the only difference. That's the only difference between Floyd, Brona, and McGregor. They all was disrespectful as hell to their opponents. In fact, Connor was more profane than Floyd ever was. Right. But the difference is he was white. And guess what? Connor got his ass whooped. He quit. He's quit pl plenty of times. He's got his ass whooped plenty of times. But people still respect him. They didn't try to cancel out all the greatness he did. When Broner lost, they tried to act like the man was never good. The only difference is McGregor is white. That's the only difference. No, no, that's one more difference, bro. McGregor what? has this type of confidence that he he don't give a fuck what nobody say. See, Broner be letting the oh, yeah, Bro Broner, you saw that when, when Broner lost, it did, you did see that it affected him that people was talking bad about him, but yeah. Broner didn't understand. His confidence when you a man and you, you jump on that, do you put on a black hat? You got to wear the black hat all the way. Exactly. You can't wear a and black hat difference. and expect white hat, um, white hat acceptance. And he was and still now. gonna talk big shit. He's still gonna act like the the loss never happened. Exactly. You know but you and that, and that's, at the end of the day, as a combat athlete, you got to be like that because guess what? If you let that one loss stop you, you're not gonna never be great. Like all, like all of these fight, Manny Pacquiao. Shout out to Manny Pacquiao. I don't like that Manny Pacquiao. I think that he might have been on, on that shit. But Manny Pacquiao almost died in the ring with Marquez. And this man came back to fight Keith Thurman at 40 Real years talk. old. Real like, talk. After the Marquez fight, he still wanted to fight. He still felt like he was great, even though that was one of the most devastating knockouts we've ever seen. That's a different type of great. Sad to say that a lot of black fighters don't have that level of confidence. They let the but that's because that's because of the black fighters. Like I said. That when they lose is if they really do be feeling negative energy from everywhere, like it's crazy. So you have to be like Ali. You got to be even stronger than everyone else and be like, you know what, fuck it. Okay, all y'all saying I suck, but I, I think I'm great. But but you're right though. The black some of the black fighters they be wanting that acceptance. Like Anthony Joshua is one of them. Adrian Broner one of them. It's like y'all act like y'all can't deal with somebody saying that you bad or or you can't deal with somebody making a meme or a video. Yeah. Like yeah, it, that's I like it, happens, if bro. Floyd would have ever lost. It would have still never hit his confidence. He'd have came back better for real. I mean, That's I don't know I because we never seen Floyd lose. Sure, only time sure. you know is when you see it, then you know. But I'm glad the Floyd did to that though is when I'm be bra I'm be bra loves and he come back and beat the person better than he did the first time. Oh, you talking about the, you, what you talking about? Like Castillo or Oh, exactly. Uh, exactly. I'm glad that Floyd never lost officially, but you're right. Every time they there was a controversial decision, Floyd came back and dominated him in a rematch. So guess what? Your point has credence. You just proved that, yeah, most likely if Floyd would have lost, he would have came back better. But I'm glad Floyd didn't lose as a black man because guess what? Until I die, I'll be bragging on that man. Real Until shit, though. <laughs> Until I lead his world. The greatest the greatest fight ever was a brother. I don't give a fuck who like it, who don't like it. Impactful fight. Do you think he, his legacy was more impactful than I? Uh, Floyd... What Ali did was singular. What Ali did was singular. And when you talk about Ali, you, now you're talking about transcending sports. Floyd transcended boxing in the fact that people who don't watch boxing, they knew of him. But Ali was getting into the, you know racial politics, uh, civil rights move, all type of shit. So it's just different. Ali was, it will be remembered for what he did outside of boxing forever. It, it's to the point where dudes like LeBron is trying to mimic that type of shit. Like they're trying to act like they're, you know, they freedom fighters and all this shit because Ali was so impactful that people today, they want to mimic what he did in real time. You know what I mean? What Ali did was a special, it was a special thing. Floyd, he wasn't doing that. He was just boxing. You know what I mean? Ali took a stance. He will be remembered forever for that stance. Floyd recently went over to Africa and was doing something and he looked scared as fuck though. Huh? <laughs> Floyd went to Africa and he was doing some type of like, uh, something good for Africa or some shit like a couple months ago, but he looked terrified on the camera. Like he wasn't supposed to be there. Like, yeah. So he was like kind of Maybe, stuck, dipping his toe into the Ali lane, but like he ain't going all full force into that. Cause you know, Floyd. I mean, he, he shouldn't because Ali is Ali and Floyd is Floyd. So you should never really try to, shouldn't try to mimic greatness. You shouldn't try to mimic events. We should all live out our own lives because whatever 
path we take is an individual path. Some men may reach heights that you don't reach, but you can reach a height in your own way that they don't reach. You know what I mean? Right. Not everybody's supposed to be some super superstar and shit like that. I think it drives Floyd crazy that, you know, people don't give him the credit to being better than Ali. He sees oh, so no, many I holes think, in his game. Floyd, and I, I think, think, Floyd, Floyd, yeah. I think I think the stuff that drives Floyd crazy is like people people trying to act like he cherry picked and all that. Like, come on, I just worked all I've been working since I was uh, literally could walk. Like Floyd Floyd dad was picking him up as a baby and putting him up to the speed bag. So when you put in that much work and you fight the most world champions and you get in there with legends like Canelo Alvarez is an all time great and you dominate him and people got the nerve to say you cherry pick. It's like, damn, I can't win for losing. That would that would bother anybody. But I don't think Floyd be thinking about Ali. The only reason nah, why you say he's better than Ali because somebody say it, he, he go crazy. You ain't seen him like he 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 go crazy with people be saying that Ali better than him because he truly. When you look at the skill level of Ali and, you, and the skill level of Floyd is not even close. It's not even close, Ali right? And that's why Floyd, I call him crazy. Like, they shouldn't be mentioned in the same vein unless you're talking about greatness. Ali was great. Ali, what he did with the civil rights movement, how the confidence that he displayed at that time as a black man, he was great. When you look at skills, they shouldn't be mentioned in the same vein. Yeah, Ali's that's... skills was nowhere near Floyd's. Ali had, had a lot of flaws. He was He's not even the best fighter. heavyweight. Lennox, Lennox Lewis was a better boxer. Yeah, than Lennox Lewis was a more technical heavyweight. Larry Lennox Holmes Lewis might be the GOAT at heavyweight, for real. Huh? Lennox Lewis might be the If you're saying that, if you're saying that, then you could say Oliver McCall is the greatest, and he knocked Lennox Lewis out with Yeah, one but, but Lennox Lewis so, beat him. We're not talking about one fight. We're talking I mean, about a body. It's so work. hard to pick people at heavyweight because you can get knocked out so easily. Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Hazim Rahman. <laughs> Lennox, Lennox Lewis avenged all his knockout, knockouts. Both yeah, he did. That knockout, is true. He came back and knocked the dude out. I mean, he came back and won, at least, because I didn't. Yeah. Uh, look. Somebody it, says Lewis absolutely was not more technical than Ali. Listen, Ali was not a technical fighter at all. I hate to break it to you. The rope dog was Ali cool. Do, the rope dog was, was good. Yeah, that was Ali definitely was unconventional. Smart. He made up his own strategies, and for that, that that was now that was great. It's hard to do that. I got to give it to him. And, and I'm gonna tell you this: fundamental boxing, Ali was not the guy to follow. That's like that's honestly, like Roy Jones was technical. No, they were technical in their own way, but they they weren't really technical by the book at all. If you Somebody honestly, says, I, I, I don't know about you. Facts. I never for real, honestly, I think Klitschko was about to get in fucking Lennox. He was about to fuck him up before that cut happened. I ain't gonna lie. It looked like he was about to knock his ass out before that cut happened on his eye. Klitsch. Somebody said Ali was superhuman. Ali was superhuman as well. Ali was as fast as a uh, a middleweight. They time Ali's jab was timed to be faster than Ray Robinson's, but Ali weighed over two hundred pounds. Like Ali was really, I don't think you understand for a man to be a heavyweight and to be dancing on his feet round after round. There's never been an athlete at the heavyweight division like Muhammad Ali that we've never seen nobody that could fight at that pace, have that amount of movement, that amount of speed at that size. And we probably will never see another athlete like that again. We were close to that. What you're and talking. they were doing 15 oh, rounds. Yeah, and he was going 15 rounds doing that shit. Great it's coming back around. It always come back around. Nah, uh, man. He probably gonna be old as hell when he come, but he coming. <laughs> no, I don't think there's that much time left in the world, brother. No, nah, yeah, you you kind of spitting with that one. <laughs> so Ali would be the most athletic heavyweight of all time, yes, that we've ever seen on camera. Boxing has been around for ages, but the, on camera, yeah, Ali the most athletic heavyweight we've ever seen, ever. I mean, huh? Tyson, more Tyson, more Tyson's more. undersized. Um, what, what Tyson was able to do, he's only five foot ten. You you expect a shorter man uh, to be able to be quick. Ali was 6'3", and Ali could bounce on his toes. Tyson was fighting, he was walking guys down and shit. Yeah. Um, and he was kind of flat-footed, especially flat -footed. later in his career. Ali mm -hmm. was bouncing on his toes for 15 rounds. You're not supposed to You're not supposed to have that amount of movement, that amount of coordination, and that much speed at 6'3", over 200 pounds. It's not the, it has never been a thing. No one, that's why you haven't seen any yeah, anyone fight with Ali guys. after this. Am I echoing, KJ? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Yes. Am I am I echoing? No, I don't hear I don't hear you echoing. But listen, if you think you're echoing, just always mute yourself when you're not talking, and that's a it's a quick fix. Yeah, for sure. Don't pretend to be a genius by making a basic observation that Ali was a buy the wasn't a buy the book uh, fighter. Who the hell said that they was a genius? You put in your you put in your thoughts on me. Hey, peace out, foodie.
I never, never, never once did I say, oh, guys, I'm a boxing genius. Da, 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 da. You putting your observations on me, man. All I do is make a statement. Yeah, everything here is opinion based. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. And if you disagree with something that I say, or if you like something that I say, just say it. If you love me, say you say that you love me. Don't stare at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be getting a pen for clapping one of my fans. <laughs> <laughs> KJ, how you think the fight between Triple G and Floyd goes? Floyd should not never ever fight a middleweight. Floyd started his career at 130. Hey, Marcus the Great, what's up, man? Floyd started his career at 130. He finished his career fighting at 154. Uh, not necessarily because he finished fighting Berto, but his biggest fight was at 154. And guess what? Floyd didn't even weigh 154. When he fought Canelo Alvarez and when, when, when he went up to fight Canelo, it was at a catchweight 152. Floyd came in on fight night 150 pounds. That's how small of a man he is. So he was never supposed to fight Triple G. He'd be too small to fight Triple G. Exactly. He's much more skilled than Triple G ever was. Triple G kind of a basic fighter, but Triple G had greatness in him. He had a great chin and he had great power and he had the will to win. But skill-wise, Triple G was basic. So if they were the same size, Floyd would have beat the brakes off his ass, but they wasn't the same size. So if they would have actually fought, Floyd would have lost. But that's not a fight no one wants to see. Nobody wants to see a man lose just because someone else is bigger. That's one thing they'll give Canelo. Like if Canelo fight don't fight me. Benavidez, it's going to be bad for boxing, but Benavidez is bigger than him. Like, he's he bigger than him, just like Bibble was bigger than him. So Canelo not supposed to beat those men. I remember I brought it up the other day, but I think that uh, Triple G beat Canelo twice. Those I mean, if you think fights. so, it's okay. I, I think... Uh, Can you explain the difference between technical and fundamental? Y'all still on that? Listen, listen. Fundamental and technical, they kind of uh, are very related because we're talking about skills at the end of the day. Technical, you're talking about skills. Fundamental, you're talking about skills. It's not really a difference. All I'm saying is that technically or fundamentally, Ali isn't somebody to follow. Yeah, yeah, that's, just, that's like Roy Jones. That's like trying yeah, to copy you don't wanna, did, If you're like, teaching somebody how to box, if you're teaching somebody how to box, you don't want to be like, yo, I got somebody for you to watch, bro. Roy Jones. Roy Jones, yeah. bro, you watch him, you gonna be the man. You watch Roy Jones, you gonna get your ass knocked out. Right. Even even Floyd, really, because that Philly show is really something really hard to kind of master. No, man, Maybe the Philly show, I just, I, I gotta disagree. I understand what you're saying, though. I have to the way that he used there are fighters that have the reflexes. Because that you got the James really Tony way, and then you got the Floyd way. It's two different Well, ways. well it, now you see, that's exactly where I was about to go with it, but Floyd not the first person to do the Philly show. Um, right. James Tony did the Philly show uh, pretty good. Pernell Whitaker at different times will use uh, some, of, some of the show, but he didn't use it as a primary defense. There have been other practitioners of the Philly show. There was a guy back in the day who looked like, it looked like he originated the Philly show. I forgot, I forgot his name, but I made a video about it. Um, and it was in like a fighter from the sixties and shit. The Philly show is a, a defense that can be done. You just need natural, great, naturally great reflexes and you need to drill it. If you don't have naturally great reflexes, the Philly shell is not for you. Hey, right. all, 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 two, two, five, thanks for liking the, uh, the video, but Floyd has, he has dominated so much with that style. People try to act like he's the only one that could do it. I disagree. It's just that if you're not a naturally reflexive athlete in that boxing ring, don't do it. George Benton. Thank you. George Benton. George Benton looked like he originated the damn Philly show, but it's guys who've done it, bro. James well, Tony, like the way nobody it, remembers how good James was at the show. James, James beat, Tony used it more as a, like a it was it was more defensive the way James did it than compared to the way Floyd exactly. did it. Floyd, Floyd countered kind of more, offensive Floyd counter more from the show. James will use it and make you miss like fifteen punches. Floyd right. not really dodging fifteen punches. He dodged one or two and counter. So that's right. a great, great observation. Didn't Sugar Ray Leonard use the Philly show? Also, hell no. You know who defense uh, looked like Sugar Ray Leonard defense? Devin Haney. Sugar Ray Leonard, a lot of his defense was off of his reflexes. So he would just move his body out of the way. He would contour his body under punches or he would rely on his feet. That's how Devin Haney's defense is. Like, Devin's defense, a lot of it is just him moving his body out of the way because he's so quick. When Devin get older, he's going to have to learn how to put his hands up really, uh, kind of like how Shakur Stevenson does. He, he puts his hands up now, but it's not really tight. You know, it's not really like, you know, a crisp defense. You mean like in a high guard? Yeah, the high guard. Then when Devin yeah. over, he's going to he gonna have to really uh, switch his defense up. Because right now, he just be making, he be just, he's like a bull in the metal. He's be making dudes miss by contorting his body. That's how Ray mm -hmm. Lennon was with his defense. That's And that's that's a perfect example. You know what was a perfect example of that? Floyd versus uh, Shane. When Shane caught him when he was doing the Philly show. But then mm -hmm. after he got caught with that Philly show, he changed it to a high guard. 
and he couldn't do nothing with it. And started walking Shane ass down. And the crazy, th crazy thing is, people think Floyd in his thirties was was you know running. They claim you know that's what Money Mayweather. Money Mayweather walked down a lot of dudes that he wasn't supposed to do. Like he walked down Shane. He walked down Cotto. You know what I mean? He walked down Canelo until his hands started hurting. So all of the Floyd running shit, that's a myth. Now, after after certain fights, uh, he, he went back to being defensive. Like uh, in a Madonna fight, the Madonna fight, he was like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> I'm getting old. I need to start using defense. I need to start moving. But a couple of those fights in his in his uh, 30s, exactly, Ricky, Ricky Hatton, um, he was walking them dudes down. Gary Russell beats Tank. Look, Gary Russell could beat people. I don't know what Gary did, but they kind of stopped fucking with Gary. Like the yeah. the big the big hat stopped fucking with Gary for whatever reason. But Gary, he dangerous. Probably talk too much trash, say something crazy to the wrong person. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can do that. And mm -hmm. if you don't have, and if you're, it's not like Gary was ever a pay per view star, so you can get away with talking shit because Tank didn't talk shit on all of them. Tank didn't like talk the about Floyd, better, but though. Tank worth so much money, he can get away with talking shit. Gary. He wasn't doing bringing up that money like that. So they like, let's just move on. Yeah, like Tank was just talking crazy today. What's that? Today or yesterday he was talking about uh Eddie Hearn, a spoon fed white boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, look, look. I understand what Tank is coming from. Tank My not, sound is off. Awesome. Tank isn't it's different type of brothers out there, bro. Tank from the hood. In the hood, there is a lot less reverence for, for Caucasians and, and their masculinity and all that in the hood. Like we don't we don't be looking at them like gods and shit. But if you go to different areas, it's black people that look at them like, you know, they, they super special and all that. Tank don't have that in him. So it's not it's not hard for him to, to criticize Eddie Hearn. Right. Exactly. It's, just, it's just what it is. Like, I don't know if you ever been in the hood, but around here, they don't necessarily worship uh, white people. Like, we're not in Baltimore. It's different hood. It's different dynamics in different hoods. But in Baltimore, <laughs> they're slapping shit out of white men, just like they're slapping shit out of black men. Anybody can, man. Who is the best boxing promoter, you think, KJ, in your opinion? Right now? Don King. I mean, yeah, Don <laughs> King won the top, he's robbing people. Who do you think yeah, is? Yeah, signed to Don King. <laughs> no, not right now, Don King not having an impact, but all, all time, Don King has put on the greatest fights of all time. Well, yeah, he's probably the most famous promoter. He's, cause no, he's no, 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 I'm talking about when you look at the fights that he gave the fans and how quick he gave it to them. He was robbing guys, but... That was a time in boxing where shit was getting done. Shit was getting made. And he had Tyson under his belt, a prime Tyson. So No, he's worked. Don King has promoted Salvador Sanchez, Ali. He promoted, like, big, big fight. He was behind so many fighters, so many great fighters at one time or another. Go look up, go look up who has fought under Don King. It's, all you're going to see is a list of legends. He had May Mayorga. I forgot. He actually had Mayorga at that time, you know. I didn't know that. I don't know if he had, yeah, he had Mayorga. Um, I remember. Literally, if you go look up who was fought under Don King, it's going to be a list of legends, bro. Legends. He had Ray Leonard? I don't know. I don't know if he, he had Ray before. I don't know. But I looked it up one day. I can't remember all the names. I just remember seeing fucking Salvador. Of course, uh, uh, Mike, somebody says he had Trinidad. Somebody says he had Mayorga. Oh, I think he had Manny Pacquiao, I think. He yeah, he had Duran, I believe. I saw him at that press conference against Ray Leonard. He had Duran. Like, Bob King used to be the dude. He used to be that gatekeeper, man. Somebody said Eddie is kind of washed up. He literally had to drop some fighters because he wasn't selling. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, he's not that he washed up. Listen, the, these fights are sold by individuals. Boxing is an individual sport. If you're a promoter and you don't have a star with you, then you're going to be struggling. If you are a promoter and you do not have a star with you, you're going to be struggling. And that brings me back to the point in this interview. Tank Davis is a pay-per-view star. And anybody who, that's why Floyd has, has endured a lot of Tank bullshit because Floyd understands it's about business. So even though Tank may give him problems, Tank bringing in money. So if, if you don't have a star and you're a promoter in the boxing game, you're going to be struggling because you won't have great fighters, but nobody paying to watch them fight. That's what Eddie Ryan at right now. Mike Tyson's a promoter, Mike Tyson. And you see, no one watches his fighters because he doesn't have no one, really. If you look. Yeah. Mike Tyson I mean, a promoter? Hold on, hold on. Is he promoting Nganu? I didn't even know he was a promoter. <laughs> I, know, I know he's promoting. Yeah, I believe he is in Ghana versus. Uh, so, this, you know, uh, Mike Tyson got somebody then, boy. What you talking about? Oh, oh wait, never mind. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Know what was you talking about? If, he promote, promote. If, he's, if he's promoting Nganu, then he got, he got him a, 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 a strong stallion. Yeah, he got one. 
Yeah, yeah he, he, got, he got somebody making that money. Yeah. And Gotti about to make it. They just fought Fury with Fury ass. Now he's jumping right in the ring with, ring with Anthony Joshua. We talking about a relative boxing novice, a man that this is going to be his second pro fight, about to fight Anthony Joshua. And the whole world is going to stop to watch it. He going to stop it's Joshua. Really I'm a better no, one. I, I think he's going to knock Joshua. Joshua. I think the experience is going to be too much. Like, I don't know what the fuck Fury was doing. Fury may be affected from the Deontay Wilder fights. Fury may have been intimidated by the fact that he didn't have a 70 to 80 pound weight advantage over him like he do most of his opponents. He might have lost because of the power. I don't know. But Anthony Joshua is experienced in this game and he hit hard. So I don't think that, I think Ngannou going to feel something different. Um, and you got to understand, he was getting tired in that fight with Fury. Even though he beat Fury, he was breathing hard and let them last round because of the experience um, edge. There's a learning curve there. It's a learning curve. Anthony Joshua has been in championship fights. You know what I mean? Has has I think he got uh, over 30 fights as a pro. Like, bro. Yeah, something like yeah, he got some fights, man. I don't know exactly the exact number. And, he, and his experience, he's been in there with amazing yeah, competition. That's why like I think Klitschko he's gonna hurt and... I think he's going to hurt him. I hope Ngannou is a favorite because I'm going to make some money. Yeah, but that, that Joshua is gone, though, KJ. You got to admit. The one that yeah, fought Klitschko. it's a better Klitschko. Joshua now. It's a better Joshua. A Joshua that's better? setting up his damn punches instead of just relying on his, his athleticism. The Joshua that's been working with Derek James, even though he, he left Derek James, I heard. But the way he looked in his last fight, Again? he was placing punches. He was, he was patient. That's how you beat um, somebody like Ngannou. Really, this shouldn't, we shouldn't even have this conversation. Ngannou has, um, he has uh, really over exceeded the expectations. Like he shouldn't even be in this fight, but he's such no, a great athlete uh, and, and one of the greatest crossover athletes ever. Yeah, we're having this conversation. But if he wins against Joshua, should he deserve a title shot right immediately back at either Usyk or Tyson Fury? Yes. Right now, uh, fuck it, if he beating him, well, like what if he beat Joshua? Of course, he's already beat Tyson Fury. Right now, Francis Ngannou should be a champion, but I don't I don't know if they fought for the belt anyway. But they robbed him regardless. But right now, Francis Ngannou is the best heavyweight in the world. He beat Tyson Fury. Yeah, and I mean, I, a do, I, do I believe he will remain the best heavyweight in the world? No, but he beat Tyson Fury, whether people want to like it or not. We all saw it. Now that was a robbery. That was bullshit. But it is what it is. Pinello just got stripped. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. They find okay. It looked like us. Uh, Suleiman finally got some balls. I think bro's bullshit. He didn't get stripped. Okay. <laughs> bro's bullshit. He probably is. KJ, someone said Canelo just got. Oh, he said sight. Okay, so he just wanted a little bit of attention. It's okay, Javi. Wiggy Francis didn't. <laughs> Francis? You mean Francis didn't beat Fury? Yes, he did, Pigeon. Francis, be, yo, why do you think Saudi Arabia, everybody wanted that man, everybody wanted his picture, everybody, they were treated, the way that they were treating Francis after that fight, it was clear that they was like, oh yeah, he just whooped that man ass, because he did, and the way that Tyson Fury looked, like everybody knows that Tyson got a gift decision, this is the thing though, all fighters have got, all A-side fighters have gotten gift decisions, the reason why Francis, I mean, the reason why Tyson Fury looks so bad, and it can't be compared to no one else's, is because you lost to a boxing novice. That's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to lose no fucking MMA fighter. Imagine if Connor would have beat Floyd. Not Dang. supposed to happen. That shit is embarrassing. God, boxing would have been fucking. And nah, that would have been the most embarrassing. Man, that would have been the end of Floyd's career if he would have let Connor. But Floyd wasn't going to let that. Happen. Floyd was never going to allow that to happen. But the fact I've had that, that Fury got lost to a friends of Gandhi, that was crazy. It was it was a horrible night for boxing. Great night for Francis. Great night for MMA. Horrible night for boxing. I heard the credibility of boxers. They talking about Fury didn't even train. Listen, it shouldn't matter. Ali didn't. Ali used to philander around with women on the night of the fight and still go out there and win. Like you're not supposed to lose to no goddamn MMA fighter. You're not supposed to lose to a novice if, if you are a champion. Philander is a good ass word. I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> a what? What's the word? You said Ali used to. Oh, Ooh. Philander. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that shit. Who do you think is the most underrated boxer ever? There's a bunch of underrated. It's boxers in the uh, in the fifties uh, and from Black Murderers Row who didn't get a chance to be champions just because boxing was ran by the mob and boxing was even more racist than it is today. So they had to fight each other in tournaments, but they were better than a lot of the people who were hosting up the damn title, like dudes like um, uh, Charlie Burley. As a Charles, you only know him because he had to go all the way up to heavyweight because he didn't get a chance at the middleweight title. Um, what's my uh, other man's name? I can't think of his, uh, Lloyd Marshall. Like, if there were guys who they had to fight each other six and seven times 
uh, in the black in their own black tournament, they would beat and kill a lot of the guys who were who were holding up the titles back in the day. But they didn't give them a shot. They were black ball. So it's a lot of underrated KJ. boxers, bro. Andre Ward is, is underrated, but it's not. The reason Ward is underrated is because Ward wasn't real, real athletic, and he, he came up in the Floyd Mayweather era, so he got overshadowed by Floyd. But he wasn't real athletic. He was technical. He was a good athlete, but he wasn't jump off the screen athletic. And he came up in the wrong in the, at a bad time. That's like when Floyd came out in the '90s. Floyd couldn't get that, that recognition because Roy Jones was the man. Was Sometimes you get settled by another athlete, and that's why yeah. Tank Davis is such a star because Tank was fighting in the Canelo era and, and making noise in the Canelo era. Tank outsold Canelo during Canelo's era. That's why Tank Davis is a whole different beast when it comes to this pay per view shit. Also, oh, Canelo, other than the um, Ryan fight. Hmm? Oh no, that, that was the only fight he outsold Canelo, but you have to understand, Canelo's been the face of boxing for 10 years. Tank not supposed to outsell him. And you also have to understand, Tank with Hector Garcia, a, a man that nobody knows, did 200K buys. Canelo fought John Ryder and only did 400K buys. John Ryder has a UK fan base behind him. Canelo has Mexico behind him. So a global fight with a global audience, was Tank Davis was right on the ass. And Tank fought a relative nobody. Canelo, he's actually fighting other people who are bringing something to the table in order to get them numbers. Tank for Hector Garcia did 200,000 buys. He outsold Lomachenko and Devin Haney in an undisputed fight. This fight was for no belts. Lomachenko and Devin Haney was fighting for undisputed. Tank Davis outsold the motherfuckers, fighting someone that we've never heard of. Nobody you know, heard of Hector Garcia before he fought Tank. To, in the boxing community and, and boxing, Lomachenko is a big name. But outside of boxing, man, Lomachenko is probably one of the most unknown big stars in boxing. There you is. know what's crazy? Bro. You know what's crazy? Bob Arum did so much to push that man like he was going to be uh, some big pay-per-view star or something instead of focusing on the real talent that he had. Not to say Loma not talented, but Bob Arum had Terrence Crawford. The more yeah. that I go back and watch some of Terrence Crawford's earlier fights, the more I realize what the fuck. Like, like next uh, next week or next month, because mm -hmm. TikTok, they dropped my pay for the end of this month, so I gotta, I'm going to start posting again next month. Yo, it's some shit that Terrence was doing. That it's like, if the world was seeing this shit, we were shocked by the Errol Spence thing, but he's been knocking dudes out in that fashion, again, stoppages in that fashion since he's came into boxing. But Bob yeah, Arum, he has such racial practices, he don't, he didn't want to really market that man. All he had Pat to do was put him against Bud Pat. Crawford should have fought years ago. Do you know how big of a fight that, do you know how big of a name Terrence Crawford would have been if he could have fought Manny Pacquiao Yo, five years ago? They was protecting Pac, man. Exactly. And they were yeah, they were protecting back. Pack, but they was holding back Bud. That's yeah. why Bud is at the end of his career trying to scramble for big fights because Bob Arum and his racial practices, man, it's a it's a goddamn shame. They but gave Loma a championship in front of his first round. It's like, why do people keep signing the top rank? I don't understand. Why do is that? I said, yo, why do you, you know why though? Because see, I'm a boxer, right? This shit hard to you broke out this bitch. So dudes be saying that that um that shit, and they be like, damn, let me just, fuck it. I take anything. Any, I take anything. Because now you you can actually train without having to work a job. Okay. You know, so it don't matter what they pay you at first. But then later on, you feel you feel the backlash like, damn, I'm missing millions because I took that one deal in the beginning. So it's sad, but that's how boxing is a dirty, dirty game. Dirty game. Right people behind. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, you can end up being a great fighter. Look at Emmanuel Augustus. Great fighter. All type of he's been robbed so many damn times. And everybody remembers him as being this exciting dude, but he never really got to enjoy the fruits of his labor. He never got them big checks like that. He never made a million dollars. But when you're somebody like, let's say Shakur Stevenson, like you could even coming up in the amateurs, they know like, oh yeah, this kid is coming. He pretty yeah. much can pick, he could pick where he want to go at that point, right? Yeah, but Shakur Stevenson was a kid then. He's not that old now. So yeah. you a kid, you don't understand the racial dynamics uh, of society you don't understand the business aspect of, of boxing. You're a, you're a kid. These people come, they approach you, they show you that check, they show you that money, you jump at it. He don't if got he no OGs. Go back, he like, sign with, if him? he could go back, he would have signed with PBC. If Bud could go back, he probably would have signed with PBC. I'm not even saying PBC. I'm saying somewhere else. Love. Look, if you black, PBC the place to go. Did you not see when uh, Al Heyman put put Roberto, I mean, Robert Guerrero and... Um, um, Birdo. What's Birdo? Robert Girl and, and Birdo on a uh on a um David Benavidez mm -hmm. car? Them yeah. old motherfuckers, they got paid. Nobody wanted to see that shit. They got paid and for nostalgia. It was good for nostalgia, but 
ultimately, Berto shouldn't be getting those opportunities at this point in his career. Al Heyman mm-hmm. takes care of his fighters. Al Heyman allowed Errol Spence to be signed on a stipend. So they allowed Errol, Errol to sign a stipend, right? And when mm-hmm. Errol signed that stipend before he became a champion, he didn't have that. He didn't have that much stake or that. Basically, what I'm saying is Al Heyman didn't own Errol. He allowed Errol to build himself up and build his credibility and prove himself fight after fight. So by the time Errol got to the big fights, he owned more of his own his own likeness, his own name. And that's why Errol Spence is his own promoter now. That's why Frank Martin fights for Errol Spence because of the way that Al Heyman handled Errol's career. Al Heyman takes care of black fighters. Look at Tank Davis. Tank Davis hasn't really fought nobody, but Tank Davis is a pay-per-view star because of the way that they handled his career. So if you're a black uh, fighter, go to the greatest PBC. protection plan of all time. Hmm? Greatest protection plan of all time. How do you listen? Y'all, could, you could call it a protection plan, nobody. but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's better that the entire world knows who Tank is before he fights Devin and Shakur. Tank is going to be the one that's bringing the star power. Devin, he has a, a nice little national following. Shakur, people really don't know him outside of boxing. So right. the way that that Floyd and them handled Tank's career, they going to help out Haney and Shakur because. Tank is the biggest, a bigger star now. You understand? If he would have fought them earlier, we would have been happy, but there wouldn't even have been that big of an event. Now, if they fight, it's going to be a huge event because people all across the world know who Tank Davis is. That's the that's the only benefit to it. So yeah, that's I one mean, hell of a benefit. Maybe the sole benefit, but it's one hell of a benefit. Yeah, hey, yo, Murphy right. Brown was good, man. It's almost like it's almost What's like good, really, you know, it's like automating the um mayweather pacquiao fight but mayweather and pacquiao was fighting everybody on the way to fighting each other well first off first off uh mayweather and pacquiao they made more money on accident they had no idea that they were both going to be 10 times bigger 10 years later you know what i mean but but at the end of the day that fight was supposed to happen early but we know manny didn't want a drug test so it's just different tank is nowhere near the age that manny and floyd was tank is about to be 30. floyd was 36 when he fought pac-man you know what I mean? So right now, the next year, after he fights Frank Martin, I promise you within the next two to three years, he will fight Devin Haney and Shakur. Devin will be in his prime. Shakur will be in his prime. Tank will be at the end of his prime. The fight is going to be electric. It's, it's going to be magnetic. And they're all going to be bigger stars than they would have been. And they saying Manny was scared of needles, but Manny got tattoos. So right, fuck out yeah, of yeah. He definitely was lying. I, I don't yeah. know why they're still trying to let him get away with that. It's crazy. You Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you how the world work, and this is why Shakur sound sound with top rank because he ain't understand how the world work. When I be up here talking about race, I'm not talking about every white person. I'm not talking about everybody of uh, different races. But at the end of the day, there are racist people out there, and the way that the world works, they love to see somebody of a different race dominate a black man. That's what it's all about. Whether you white, whether you Asian, they like to see it. That's what this world. That's what this world is about. Yeah. Whether people want to admit it or not, I'm not talking about every individual, but that's how the at the top. That's how business is ran. That's how business is ran. You know what I mean? We keep the black people at the bottom. We may re- we may bring up a black woman just so she could look better than her man. But other than that, we're not really dealing with y'all Negroes. That's how the world is run. <clears throat> Say reality. Goofy said two to three years, Tank versus Haney will happen. Yeah, that's a good time frame. Man, In two to three years, Haney, Haney will happen. First has- of all, listen. After Tank fights Frank Martin, let's say he has another fight at lightweight, he's going to go fight the winner of the Roley and Pitbull Cruz at 140. Now he's at 140. He's directly looking across at Devin Haney. So two years go by, him and Haney going to square it off. Tank will be, what, 32 or 31 years old? That's a great time frame. He'll be on his way out of boxing before making the biggest fight of his life. He already expressed that he doesn't want to be around that much longer. He doesn't want to fight till he's 40 like Floyd. He's not really that much in love with the sport, but he happens to be one of the most talented people in the world at the sport. Yo, everybody that's been liking the live, thank you, man. I feel like I've been cooking. I've been giving y'all a power hour. I'm about to get off in about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, before you go, I got to ask him, folks. Like, what's up? What's up? Who has Tank fault that, that that tells you he he has so much talent? Oh, you talking about like oh, his no, 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 no. When, when Tank, exactly. We about to find out in this Frank Martin fight. But yeah, that's I'm what going I'm saying. Off, I'm going like, off. Everybody's talking about my boy Frank out just because he got... He got the followers. Like, dog, do you see what happened to Ryan? I feel you, but check me out. Tank Davis is the eye test. Um, when you go watch what he was doing to a lot of those flat footed Mexicans, or whatever, a lot of fighters could beat him, but Tank was making that shit look good and he was knocking them out. Tank could counter. He has great footwork. Uh he has a wonderful jab, especially for a man of such short stature. And he had he had great speed, great reflexes. Eye test wise, he looks to be one of the best in the world. So you can't deny his talent. 
But oh, does no, that mean you, is talent? But, but I'm saying, I'm saying, but Frank got longer what, reach, what bigger man, everything, but, bro. Like it's not in nothing in this scenario is takes advantage this time around. This is a whole different type huh? of wall game. You said what? Re repeat that. Go, my bad. I ain't hear you. I said there is nothing that's in tanks advantage in this fight. This is a whole different type of wall game. Oh, Frank ain't going. Yeah, Frank's Thank the bigger you. man. But 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 the tank has a power advantage. But you're exactly right, and this is going to be. Tank's I can't first even say that because everybody he fought that he laid out been drained. Oh no, you tripping? Tank hit. Yeah. Tank knocked out. Mario Bart, bro, Tank hit harder than Frank Martin, bro. He hit way harder than Frank Martin. Frank Martin, you you mean to tell me Mario Barrios hit harder than Frank? N no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the effect that Tank had the on Barrios. If Frank, if Frank would have fight Barrios, even if he beats him, he's not beating him in that way. Tank Frank Davis Barrios. hits harder than Frank Martin, bro. I'm, look that's at not Frank, the debate. Look at Frank last fight. Yeah, Frank didn't stop that dude. Frank hit that man with clean shots. He didn't stop him. He had him on the run though. He had that motherfucker yeah, on the run. Yeah, I didn't see him. So wait a minute, K. Okay, K. Okay. You you a boxer like I'm a boxer, kid folk. You ain't never just wanted to tap up somebody. Just just just. What what one would you rather have? Would you rather get knocked out after six round or just take a twelve ass twelve round ass whooping? Look, man, the way I look at it, neither. <laughs> look, man, I'm trying to win. I ain't trying to get, I ain't trying to get knocked out. I ain't trying to get beat up. I'm coming to fucking win. Fuck what you talking Frank about. Was, uh, Frank, Frank was in danger that last fight. That's what you're saying. No. Oh, okay, just making sure. Wait, I, I just watched that fight. I just watched that He's fight last night. Situation. He was supposed to be doing a breakdown. Let me tell you this. The way that the announcement team was covering that fight, they made, oh, it, yeah, look that like was much, they made it look like it was a much closer fight than it was. Frank really? was not in danger in that fight at all. He was in control, but he was too hesitant. If he hesitate like that against Tank to throw his punches and he in there overthinking shit, he going to lose, bro. Take, take oh, facts, moves, facts. Right? The that's only thing, the only thing I'm worried about Frank about is he, is he gonna show up under the lights? That's the only thing. That's that, that, that's that's my point. That's part of what I'm saying. The way that Tank Frank was taking too long to make decisions in that fight, bro, way too long. Tank don't never show that. Tank be quick as shit. Tank, Tank make it. Tank be when under. Tank decide that he gonna up the pace. He does it. When Tank decided he gonna sit back and wait, he does it. He don't never look like he in there confused. Frank mm -hmm. Martin, he looked confused about what, what his next step was in the fight against Adantunia. You don't want to do that against somebody with that much firepower and Tank Davis. Tank be behind on the cards, dog. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't recommend Tank do the same strategy for these last three fights. I, it's going to be a whole different type of world. Game. Exactly. And it's going to be the it's first time to fight somebody with fast feet. I've been saying exactly. it for months, bro. Tank he can make that, he can make that, he can make that right, then that left under if he want to. And ain't nothing going to okay. happen but a shift. And it's going to be dead to his jaw. He almost mm. got caught with Rowley. He got a... He, he better switch up a technique. Bro. No, Roly, Roly did catch him. Ro Tank ate yeah, that Roly, shit. Roly caught him in the first round. At the end no, of the no, first no, no, no. I'm talking about before he laid him out. Roly caught him. Oh, you okay. know what I'm talking about? And then he rolled out. I'm like, bro, you do that with Frank? Dog, no, there ain't going to be no uppercut because Frank going to turn with you. He ain't going to fall for no traps. If Frank come out with that aggression like that he showed in the other team, if he come out with that early, Tank might be in trouble because Frank throw more punches. Frank Fast. could throw punches like Meldrick Taylor. But Man. only thing is, does he have the stamina to do that round after round? Because it, it looked like he would, he would turn on and then go wait. It's one thing that I noticed. And I'm going to break this down to my visual for my Patreon. But Frank Martin will start around fast and then slow down. Tank will start around slow and speed up with the last minute. That's actually better because people remember the last, the last minute more than the first two minutes. So that's going to be something that's in Tank's favor. But Frank will have to do something different if he, if he want to win. I got Tank 60-40, man. Man, I think a good uh, thing that uh, I just read something I gotta say and I'm gonna drop down home, but I swear. All right, man. Uh, I only seen Tank fight on his back foot, Ken Folk. I, I ain't never seen him. Nah, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, dog. I'm sorry. That's just, I'm, when, you know. Hold up, hold up, Murphy. Before you leave, you we know that's bullshit because you said Tank be down on the cars. When Tank was losing the Barrios, what did he do? He stepped to that motherfucker. When Tank was uh getting uh getting outpointed by fucking Leo Santa Cruz, what did he do? He stepped to him. Tank stepped to Pedraza. When Tank wanted to go forward, he pushes forward. So I had to disagree with that, man. He In a stance, he, like actually stepping like down South Carolina stepping? No. No, he did not. Bro, go watch the Barrios fight, boy. He stepped to Barrios. He's he 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 already had under. Down. He had no choice. That ain't exactly. no stepper, dog. But you just dog. said you've never seen it. You just that said you've never was, seen it. You that man he no walked. Choice. He walked into punches trying to get to the inside. That's, that's, that's hey, not that's, Mike Tyson did that. That's what, that's what stepping to a motherfucker is. Errol Spence no. stepped to a motherfucker. No, Errol, was he in Southpaw? Was he in Southpaw? Who? Arrow. You said what you said was was Errol in Southpaw? Yes, that's stepping when you yeah. actually keep your stance. That that man walked into that stance. It was left, right, left, right. He was square as fuck. You, you talking about uh, when he fought Cruz, right? Yeah. 
Well, then, then that then that knockout that knockout was very very like the way that he switched his stance that was he, crazy. But when he fought Barrios, he didn't switch stances. That motherfucker hunted that boy down. Let every KJ okay, hunted, I got hunted you, him dog. down. He had to dog, and he was still. Left but but you right, say man. you say he ain't never did it, but now you saying he had to do it. So that hey, bro, around man. around counts. Yeah. <laughs> Walking uh, from his heel to his toe. Okay, that's <laughs> stepping all of a sudden. I got you, Jay. That's why you laughing, dog. <laughs> In a minute, fam. Oh shit, man. Now we know that Tank like the uh he Tank definitely catches on to the uh to the combos that uh, other fighters throw at him. They keep spamming the same combos, he catches on to it and then you know count in the Ryan Garcia. Now do you think that Frank Martin series? Has enough combos to where as though he can keep Tank um dip guessing. off on his shoes. Frank Martin, yeah, Frank Martin. And the thing is, Frank Martin is great using angles, bro. Great mm -hmm. using angles. So it's like, boom. But yo, I gave y'all my power hour. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here, man. Murphy Brown, thanks for coming up. Uh one vandal, say a polar. I think my man David trying to come up, but David, I'm about to get up out of here, man. I've been up here for over an hour. So you had to catch the next one, my brother. Y'all have a good day, man.